coming from across the pond again this week. Yep. Come to save our taste buds again. I do what I do. <laughs> what are you teaching us how to make this week, Janelle? All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a holiday cookie. This will be fun because I haven't made these before, as opposed to my regular, you know, Christmas cookies. So these will be fun to make together. I picked this really because of how it will look. So we're gonna make some red velvet cookies with chocolate chips in them. Some of the chips will be white, so it'll give you that red and white look, that, which I think is very holiday. Once you know how to make a cookie, you're pretty decent with most cookies. It's really like the base ingredients are all the same for the most part. And it's really just adding different flavors. I'm excited to make these. I wanted some holiday cheer, you know? This has been a very unique year, so the, the little you can do, you know, to add that extra flair, I'm just like, I'm here for it. I'm doing all of it. Alrighty. So we have 200 grams of all-purpose flour. That comes out to a cup and a half and a tablespoon of flour on our end, if you're in the US. This recipe also has cocoa powder in it. It's the fourth cup of cocoa powder. It's 21 grams of cocoa powder over here. Mm. So for those who don't know what Red velvet is, is basically a, mix, a hybrid mix of chocolate and vanilla. So that's where the cocoa powder is coming in. If you like swirl ice cream, this is probably a good cookie for you. I'm gonna go ahead and put the baking soda. For us, it's called bicarbonate of soda, and you just need a teaspoon of that. I'm gonna go ahead and add one fourth teaspoon of salt. When you get all the ingredients together, you wanna mix this until it's pretty uniform. So it should be a nice light brown color. Oh, that's good, boo. <laughs> this is gonna be a more difficult part for you guys because you don't have a mixer, right? Right, right. sorry. So just so you know, people made cookies back in the day, so they didn't have a mixer probably. So you just gotta do the extra hard work by hand. I'm gonna use my stand mixer because I don't want to do that. <laughs> you no. can do it with the regular whisk. What I do with cookies is I start out with a whisk in the beginning to make sure that like the butter gets incorporated well with the sugar. But as you're adding in, when we start adding in the dry ingredients, you should switch to a spoon because you don't want to over mix cookie dough. If you over mix, it kind of starts to be cakey and you don't want that. After you add the eggs in, I would switch over to a spoon from there. This recipe calls for a half a cup of butter, which is essentially one stick. Yeah, it's 115 grams. Measurements. When, if you're using a stand mixer, I typically like to use this contraption. It's not exactly the whisk setting, but I think it it mixes it without over mixing it. So this is usually my cookie and cake mixer. If you let the butter sit out and soften, which I did, I let it sit out overnight. It'll be soft enough where you won't have to mix it too long. You don't want melted butter, but you do want very soft butter. That looks pretty good. So the struggle is real over here. Let me get, let me know you guys if butter is soft. How's it coming? That's, that's how it's coming, Janelle. If it's not all the way softened, it may take a little while to get there, but it should be very smooth. I used to do this by hand, fun fact. When I was, I started making cookies in high school as a way to kind of make some side change. The cookies I started with were chocolate chip and snickerdoodle. And back then I was mixing them by hand. So it was a lot of work. I don't know if baking is for me. I didn't know what? I will say that I think baking is harder than cooking. Cooking, you can save. Baking, if something's off, it's off, and you usually have to just start over. It's science. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Next, what did you do? Terrence is spraying butter over the whole kitchen. Let me see the bowl. 
That's what I'm saying. Y'all see this? Scrape the sides so that it incorporates together. All right, we're gonna say that soft butter. So we're gonna add in our sugars. We're gonna beat that in until it's smooth. Do we add it in slowly? No, you can dump it. I believe we have three fourths cups of dark brown sugar. All right, this is 150 grams. It's 50 grams of sugar, granulated. Keep using your spatula to make sure all the ingredients get incorporated. Shout out to my Santa spatula. It's easier to make sure it's incorporated at this stage, so you want to do it before you add anything else. So the sugar and butter together should kind of be like a wet sandwich. It looks wet sandish. It's not going to be completely smooth looking. When you say not smooth, it's how scrambled egg kind of texture. So it's pretty smooth. You want to mix it a little more because it is going to come together. As you can see, it's pretty smooth. <laughs> It's yeah, like, we're not there. It goes from the sandiness to like kind of a whipped butter. This is what it looks like right now. It's getting there. Yeah. It just needs to be a little creamier, like softer. I think you're almost there. What's your singing, Janelle? I don't even know the whole song. I think it's called Love Fury. I'm still trying to do the leaves run me. Keys. That one. That's like. <laughs> oh man, she's a beast. All right. I think this might be as good as we're gonna get it, Janelle. I can still see chunks of butter though. I'd normally be listening to Christmas music, but hey, you know, copyright. <laughs> yeah, I'll be playing generic YouTube. Christmas <laughs> Janelle. Yes. I feel like this recipe was a setup. These are not for the faint of heart, especially if you're making them from scratch. Like, you gotta put work in. But I did tell you guys this is leave the butter out overnight. It's been out for days. Did y'all have it next to the window? Like, no, it was like in the corner, farthest from the window, actually. This is cold in the house. <laughs> so, the next thing you have to do is add in the milk and egg and vanilla extract. One tablespoon, and then one egg. And we just have the Asda version of the um, honey for vanilla, so we're gonna do the two teaspoons. Okay. All right, I believe we're at the part where we add the food coloring in. I believe for gel food coloring, you need two teaspoons. Ooh. What do you think of this color? Should I add more? That's good. Yeah, this is good. We're gonna go ahead and mix in the dry ingredients. I usually like to do it a little bit at a time for the dry ingredients so they don't splatter all over the place. Start with maybe half, get that well incorporated and then add the other half. As you see, of course, the cocoa powder is gonna darken it. So you're looking kind of for like a deep red. Right, let's see what we're working with here. Mm, that's a nice cookie. Let me see, what's your red looking like? Now it's looking like brown. Maybe add a little more red to that. See mine, I added more red because it did start to look really brown. But now it's this color. I add a little more gel coloring. So the way you can tell that dough is done is if it's no longer sticking to the utensil that you're using. That means it's like kind of incorporated. That's kind of a good indicator of if you have enough flour in your dough. This is the consistency you want. You see how no stick. That's what makes a good cookie though. It does look thick, but it's still sticking. Like maybe a little bit more flour. Not a, add like maybe a tablespoon at a time. The other thing that does is it makes for a prettier cookie because when you incorporate the chocolate chips, if your batter is too runny, it kind of absorbs the chocolate chips, if you know what I'm saying. If you want the like more aesthetic looking, you want to make sure that the dough won't stick to the chocolate chips. Yeah, it's getting less and less on the bone on the spatula. So are you guys are incorporated now? Yeah, we're going to say the dough's incorporated and then do we add to the chips? Let's see what it's looking like. Okay, so that looks good. So it says a cup of chocolate chips, 
Maybe do three forks cups of chocolate chips and then the rest white. 180 grams of chocolate and white chocolate chips. Save some of the chips for when you roll them out, you can kind of like place them for aesthetic. And see, this is what I'm talking about with the dough. It's not sticking to the chip. Oh, cool. It's looking very Christmassy. I like it. It's looking good. What kind of chocolate chips did you guys buy? White chocolate, and they don't have semi-sweet over here, so we had to get the extra dark chocolate. Hmm, this would be interesting. As long as it's not milk chocolate. Milk chocolate doesn't make, it's not, it's too sweet for a lot of cookie bases, I think. So I'm not the biggest fan of cookies with milk chocolate chips in them. Yeah, we're gonna roll these out. Key thing for cookies. The best thing you can bake them on is parchment paper. If you want nice cookies and you don't want them to burn or overcook at the bottom, like parchment paper is a perfect thing. All right, how big are you making yours? Supposed to be, what does it say? A one and a half tablespoons. So yeah, I'm just gonna take my tablespoon, which is pretty much a tablespoon where you're not capping off the top like this. See, it's kind of stupid. The key to this is just like making sure they're even. You don't want to have ones that are super big and super small because some of them are gonna be underdone, some might be overdone. So just making sure they're the same size, I think is the most important. <laughs> is this too big? Oh, that looks like yours. Maybe even a little smaller. Cool. How many are you expecting this to make? Based on the size, I think it might make about 20 to 24. You having fun? I think this is the most enjoyable part so far. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. What kind of other things are you doing to celebrate the holiday? Well, we're still gonna make sure we're like eating festively. So we're gonna get like- Turkey crown, yeah. Turkey crown, but we're gonna try to fry it. You know how Mr. Robert fried the turkey? Do you have a deep fryer? Well, no, but it's only the crown and we have a pot, so. Yes, we're gonna try for a turkey. That sounds fun. How's it coming, Terrence? I've got about 12 now. I think maybe ours are a little big because I have, oh, five, 10, 13. <laughs> yep, but you know what? A lot of our ingredients did go flying. I was about to say, I think two of them ended up on the kitchen walls and my glasses. I think you might just have slightly larger circles than me, but it's all good. Janelle's look much redder. I added more food coloring. Oh, I think I made 22. All right, Janelle, this is what ours are looking like. They're looking brown. Like a very deep burgundy. <laughs> These are done. Looking pretty good, as you can see. Do you see how I can move the dough over it? But I can also push the dough off of it. Like, it's not stuck. So it makes, it's gonna be pretty when it comes out. Now, if you have any white chocolate chips and stuff left, and you feel like maybe you need to add some more for aesthetic, you use them all. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, like if, it, if there's some cookies that don't seem, look like they have any white going on, you can add a little more. They're gonna be really nice when they're done, I can tell. Yum, yum, yum. All right, guys. So this is our finished dough product. It looks pretty good. Not as red as Janelle's and they're a little bit bigger as well, but. They were never gonna be as good as Janelle's. They were never going to. In this instance, colored might not mean flavor. It should come out the same flavor, which is what we're going for. But we're gonna stick these in the refrigerator for two hours. Bye, Janelle. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye with you guys. Um, send us a video of what yours look like. I absolutely will when I go to bake them. Hey guys, about to bake these and you will see the finished product. Those look good. We're taste testing by the tree. Soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. Great flavor. You should definitely try these. If you're feeling creative, try adding a little bit of cream cheese icing in the middle. If you've ever had a red velvet cake, pretty much the same thing in cookie form. Happy holidays. All right, fam, we're hey, back. Happy. happy next day. You guys, it's actually been about 12 hours, not two. These got extra time to firm up. Mm -hmm. They're looking good. We preheated the oven to 177 Celsius. We're gonna stick these in for 13 minutes. 
And for those that don't know, they just fall down. Because I thought we had to put them into a patty. I was so perplexed at what he was talking about. And I had to show him a gif of what cookies do in the oven. So. And that makes sense. So. All right, we're going to stick these in. Yeah. And stuff in the oven. Stop! We're ready. Oh. Check those out. Nice. Look at those. Not so red velvety but they look delicious. Ooh. Ooh, do you see oh. that steam? Oh my gosh, it's falling apart in my hand. Oh, I just lost a chip. Mm. That's a success. I think <coughs> the texture of ours from the inside is more kind of cake. No, serious, like brown. But it's delicious. Thanks for joining us this week, fam. <laughs> we hope you learned something new. <laughs> we certainly did. Uh -huh. Again, let us know if you do get to make them yourself. Thanks for coming by again. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe. Go ahead and like the video as well and tap the notifications. Ding, ding, ding. Love y'all. Bye, fam. I made another fruit garland. Oh.